Meringue style. A bit like Gangnam style, but like the Meringue style. Hello everybody, I uh, hope you're well. About uh, a week ago maybe, I put up a video for free ingredients to try one time in your life and you guys absolutely loved it. Uh, you were like, do this again, make this a playlist, like wear it. I, I can't wear it. My point is, if you love it, I'm gonna do another one. So this is part two of four, three, two, one, and maybe we will do other random calculations that you did put in the combi in the com combinations box, the comments box. Like, five, did anyone's like doing five, four, well, I think someone put Pythagoras theorem. But yes, we are gonna be doing this today. Very, very exciting. As like the last video, a lot of you are like, oh Barry, you could have done water, you could have done seasoning, but I really wanted to show you how simple and easy food can be with just three ingredients and then you guys pimp it up and it just looks way better than mine. But before we get started on this, something happened on the giant Jammy Dodger video, didn't it? I think I just broke the Ratmaster 3000. <laughs> Yes, that's right, my Rap Master 3000 broke, but being the guy I am, I already had another Rap Master 3000. This is exactly as it looks, it says Rap Master 3000 on it, and this, I don't know why, I don't know why I didn't see this before, because I could have compared them. This is like, the width is half of it, it's lighter, it's easier to carry, but this one, it should work. We'll quickly look at this, because we might need it in a bit. Uh, it's actually got a locking system on it, so you can pull the flap down like this, but then if I push it out to unlock, we can lift out the center, which is where the sharp blade is. Uh, when I dropped it, the black thing shattered on the floor, and this was what was actually attached. They're wedged to the special film that you buy. Yeah, so that they make you buy the expensive film, but you get loads, so it's all good. So it's got a special connection thing on it. That goes in there, and look, it should. Ooh. We feed it for our blade, and boom, this will be a new wrap master that we just put in and then lock in place. So there we go. Rap Master's not gone. It was just always with us. But apparently there's a Rap Master four and a half thousand. Proper jealous. Okay, so just like the last one, uh, we're gonna do a starter, a main, a dessert, and a drink. So we'll get the main done first, which we can keep chilled, uh, even frozen, but um, let's let it go. This is a packet of fresh ravioli. This is chicken and chorizo ravioli. That means I'm gonna have a chicken and chorizo lasagna. Yes. My point is they had loads of different raviolis in there and to help make our lasagna and give it some extra hidden flavor, we're just gonna chuck this in with our cheese and sauce. That's it. So we're just gonna get some, this is some passata, okay? We're then gonna get our ravioli. Well, hey, <laughs> I've just jumped out. In fact, I will push them together. If I spin them round, spin them right round, baby, right round, like a ravioli baby, right round, round, round. This is um, some grated cheddar. Of course, the only downside to keeping this two, three ingredients is, you know, you could really go crazy with different cheeses like Parmesan. Ravioli on, some more sauce. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Just spreading that out a little bit with a spoon just to cover it, nice. Oh, just got the cheese everywhere, but hey, it's all part of the fun, eh? I think we've got one more layer in us. Really gonna go all out on that and cover that up. Boom, 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 boom. So we're gonna wrap Master 3000. Cheers, mate. Oh, brilliant. Did you just shut the fridge on me? Ah, oh, we gotta go quick. There we go, there we go, there we go. Right, here it goes. The reason we're putting it in cling film is just because we put it in the fridge. You can do this and make it well ahead in advance or freeze it, but we will need foil for later. Keeping an eye on you two. Hmm? That would be the world's strangest British relationship, wouldn't it? <laughs> can I get arrested for that? Uh, this next recipe, it is 10 to 10 in the morning, folks, as I, uh, as I do this, we are gonna go for a fan oven. Uh, 160C is non-fan, so we're going 140. Is that a baking tray from last night's dinner still in the oven? Yes, it is. I got a level with you. This next recipe is kind of like, it's four ingredients, but it's not. It's, there's water, but the water is not going in the recipe. So that's how we're getting around it. We are making a creme brulee, okay? So good. But the cool thing about this, we need sugar, and that is just for the caramelization. Damn right we're using a chef's torch at the end. I love that. We're using an egg. We're not even using the white. We could whip that up with the sugar and do some sort of meringue topping on it. I wasn't planning to, but I literally just came up with that. I think we will. Uh, the yolk is gonna help bond our ice cream. And you can pick, you watching this right now, can pick any 
flavor ice cream you want. Within reason, nothing too chunky, not sorbet. Actually, sorbet might work, and it's too watery. Eh, I don't know, um, forget I said that. Car door ice cream, I call it car door ice cream, because it's, okay, we're gonna go for a strawberry creme brulee with a now additional flamed meringue topping on top. I don't have to do that, but this is gonna be insane. Ah. Need to remove the yolk from a gadget? No. <laughs> Need to remove the yolk from an egg? There is a plastic bottle for that, or uh, uh, a, a fish, and he called it an egg. The egg white's gonna stay in there, we will whip that up. The yolk is just going in here, like this, for now, for now. You know what, I've actually put two eggs in because I wanna make a second one for Mrs. Barry later. Um, this is some strawberry ice cream then. Look, Boston, strawberry ice cream. 30 seconds in there just to melt it up. I've left it at room temperature so it shouldn't take long. All right, so this ice cream's yeah, pretty much there, although yeah, nice and pouring. The egg yolk is what's gonna help firm it up, okay? Otherwise we're just baking ice cream. So let's just grab a whisk. All right, I still don't think I've got enough there. I'm gonna have a little pour. There we go. Oh, that's not too bad. Yeah, that'll do. I wanna have a little bit of a space. And if I can get the other one in in time, let's have a look. Will it feel? Oh yes, that'll do. Okay, nice. Oh, there's strawberry chunks in there. Anyhow, here's the fourth ingredient that's not the ingredient. Loaf tin. I need to pour this in quite carefully. We're doing a water bath, so just like proper cranberry style. I say proper, it, it, it's, it's, it's a bodge, isn't it? Let's get this in the oven. That is hot because of the boiling water, you plonker. Ah ha ha ha, be careful Barry, be careful Barry. Ah ha ha, oh no, okay. Okay, uh, just to be sure, get an oven glove, yes. And up and in they go for about 45 minutes. Well, we need our sugar for the creme brulee topping anyway, but let's say with the egg whites, you might as well whip them up. Oh, wow. Look at that. Nice, big, glossy Tim Peaks. I'm gonna take about a tablespoon of caster sugar. Take the speed down a little bit. Boom. Look at that. So we might use it, we might not, but we can use that for a garnish on our dish. Meringue style. A bit like Gangnam style, but like on a meringue style. All right, here we go then, folks. It is done. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna go and drop this. Please don't drop it. Ugh. It's shrunk down a teeny bit, but I'm happy with it. So what I'm gonna do is carefully lift them out, and I say carefully, that means without filming at the same time, onto here to cool down to room temperature. Is that gonna do it? Oh no, these are really bendy. Come on, you should be able to do it. Your tongs, what else are you good for? Uh, what about these tongs? Remember these? These were amazing. Come on. Oh gosh. <laughs> Despite spending an absolute fortune on ingredients, ouch. No, I can't afford a tea towel, that was my point. Ha <laughs> ha There we go. Oh yeah, first time. No problems. Linton, can you edit that out? Cheers, mate. Look at that! Alright, so they're out of the boiling hot ha, that's hot. Uh, bath and it's going to just sit for a moment. That was a moment, but longer than that. You guys know me too well. This next one is going to be... Do you know what would happen if this exploded? There'd be debris everywhere. Uh, so we've got some cranberry sauce, brie, and this is some bread. Now we had to get as much flavour as we could into the bread. There's lots of other ones. This is a focaccia. Well, we're just cheating here because this is a flavoured loaf. That's the way this three thing works, all right? Ow, ramekins are hot. So we've got the brie and we're gonna use this as a sort of template. It's kind of like jammy Dodger territory again. We're gonna cut out a hole. Not a heart shape this time though. Wow, that looks huge. It's not, I've just sort of put it so close to the camera, but we're gonna cut around it. And I'm probably gonna have to move the camera because I'm gonna hit the microphone. All right, so we should have a, yeah, we've got a hole there. I'm not gonna go all the way down. I'm gonna sort of slice it just to take that top layer off. Oh, yes. So what I'm actually gonna do is I wanna keep it a little dense. Now, hopefully this thing will fit snugly in. Oh, you beautiful thing. Look at that. Oh, oh. Now what we're gonna do is make some, this is gonna sound really weird, fingers on the bread. As they bake, hopefully, it should tear off. So you've got like little teary chunks that you can um, just tuck off. Uh, that sounded really wrong. Oh yeah, 
Brie and Cranberry goes together like peas and carrots, Jenny. So let's just carefully, or maybe care for Brie, <laughs> uh, put the Brie loaf, oh yes, yes, fragile, fragile, whoops, onto a dray like this. And then we just bake it. But we'll bake it with our lasagna. And whilst that was happening, oh, the ramekins have been calling down. Sorry, I know my phone always gets everywhere, but I have lots of phone calls when I make videos, by the way. These are at room temperature now. All right, and what we need to do is actually chill these for like maybe an hour in the freezer, uh, in the fridge a little bit. You don't want it frozen. Just make them cold. Let's return to the lasagna that isn't a lasagna, yeah? Oh, we've got a nightmare. We haven't got any tin for you. You want to bake uh, the lasagna uh, with it covered, ideally, because you don't want to scorch the tops too soon. Then you want to get it bubbly for the last bit. I've got a, a bodge though. Right, so there we go. Uh, I would now be normally ri uh, ripping, no, putting foil on top of this. Instead, uh, I've got a seal pat. I don't know if this is going to work. This is one of those like uh, pre things that uh, you line the pre things. Uh, you know, that you line trays with like non-slip. But effectively, I'm gonna put it in the oven like this because I, I, I feel that this is still gonna do the same thing. It's gonna act as a shield uh, to protect the top layer from getting burnt. So about half an hour. Well, I know it's not gonna melt because it's a seal pat. Uh, I think Mrs. Barry used the last cling film this morning for her lunch, but we'll see you that in half an hour. All right, so our fourth and final uh, recipe. We wanna kind of have it cold, but we'll put it in the fridge anyway. This is gonna be a gorgeous milkshake. In fact, for drinks, we can do so many three ingredient alcoholic recipes, but I kind of wanted to make this, you know, the videos about like, you know, for kids and, you know, maybe pugs as well that are scratching themselves. But I wanted to make it universal, you know? Just chuck vodka in it. But this thing is going to be amazing. I have got a Nutella bowl. That's not critical, but we just have a bowl. Uh, but in here, is some amazing quality vanilla ice cream. It's the real good quality stuff with the, the little specks, the vanilla pods in there, all right? Just like before, any ice cream, but vanilla will work well with this, especially with those pods. Mm, the infused pods. <laughs> We're also gonna use some hazelnut milk. So this, with a Nutella bowl, I intentionally use this to remind myself, it's kind of gonna give it a Nutella vibe. But then it needs chocolate, doesn't it? And to make myself feel like I'm doing some kind of like healthy protein, oh my God, we need some creatine powder. Uh, we've got some Nesquik uh, chocolate powder. Oof. So this is kind of going to be like a vanilla chocolate hazelnut milkshake that's still going to have that little icy twang. Ice cream's going in. Nice. We then top it up with our hazelnut milk. Get down. Get in there. And then we take our powder. We're going to go for three good teaspoons of that. Put our lid on. And that is it. We're going to whiz this up now. Done. Oh. oh, you see that? that? That sort of rough chunkiness to it. Boom, chicka wow wow. This oven did get turned up. I can't remember if I said that or not. Turn up for what? Uh, in goes the brie. And I'm going to give this another five minutes. And the only thing with that brie, um, it would be really cool if I used the four ingredients to brush oil on the top because that would really give it a nice golden brown sort of surface. Focaccia, focaccia is actually quite oily anyway, so it might help that. But if you're doing this, put a teeny brush of oil on there, season it as well. All those stuff that I'm not doing and it'll be mwah. All right, boom. I think it's worked. Oh yes. Okay, it's, it's, it's not browned, it won't be, but it's protected it, which has helped cook through the ravioli. So now I'm gonna keep that, cooking the lasagna. Uh, for like 15, 20 minutes until it's golden brown and the brie needs about 20 minutes too. So, whilst that's happening, we shall do the um, the strawberry things. That's it, yeah. So what I've got here is a teaspoon of sugar and we're just gonna sprinkle that on top of our effectively <laughs> strawberry ice cream custard. A little shimmy, just to even it out. It has like shrunk a little bit in size, but I don't mind that. I don't mind it because we're going to try and do the meringue thing as well. It's going to be a Bruce Lee meringue. Bruce Lee meringue. <laughs> this is like a chef's torch thing. You can do it under the grill if you haven't got one of these. And I'm going to lightly caramelise up the sugar. I'm going to put a bit more on actually. Oh, that's good. That's good. Oh, should we double coat it? Oh, why not? 
I really want to coat it properly. I want to get a good disc of caramelized sugar on there because that's when you get that sort of breaky thing in it. But that's going to be a nice rock hard layer on there. So there we go. That's my other one done uh, just to show you that I did it. I kept the meringue mix uh, in the fridge whilst this was all happening. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Oh, this is cool. I like this. No problem is because it's not done fresh, I, I can't really spike it, but I'll do my best to. I think we'll go like really rough like this. Basically hacking it up with a spoon. But this is just an optional thing I was going to do. I, you know, I'm just going to see if we can make this a thing because you're using up the whole egg. Look at that. I like that. Looks like popcorn. Yes! I love that. Just to show you on my spare one, uh, how quickly it cools down and the time it did for me to torch that meringue. See? Oh, and you've got the strawberry custard underneath. Beautiful. So there you go. I'm not eating this one. Well, I might. In fact, I... Oh, no. This is Barry can have... Yeah. I'll dress it up later. Awkward. I just checked the oven. The brie is melting and gooey. And the, the lasagna thing is, is like a hot bubbling mess. <sighs> oh, look at that. Uh, I've just taken this out of the oven. Look, it's toasted. The gooey cheese coming down the centre there. Ooh. Look, you beast. Ah. You know, the other thing I was thinking, oh my gosh. Oh, yes, look. Oh, I really want to put herbs on it. I can't. But on that sort of topic, oh, uh, that's quite a big portion. <laughs> you could have used like more like herb infused sauces as well. I mean, it's baked ravioli in it, but lasagna sounds cool. Oh yeah, that has toasted. Oh, the top is so crunchy. I don't know if this is gonna work. I'm not really a, a brie expert. Come on, break the seal, break it. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Look at that. The only thing is I actually generally hate brie. I'm hoping cranberry will mask it. Look, 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 look. Oh. I, don't, oh, I don't like it, I don't like it. I like cheese when it's melted, but brie, I don't know, I find it quite strong. Oh, cranberry. Oh, cranberry. Mm. Oh, the cranberry really did mask that, but then all of a sudden it's got this like, kind of like beery vibe in brie. I don't know if it's just me, it gets it like real tang that's just a bit too kind of blue cheesy territory. You get me? But uh, let's do the others. The lasagna, which is just, Oh, that is so rich. Really tomatoey, the cheesy tang in there, and that chicken chorizo. We're forgetting about that. It just looks like parcels of pasta. Chicken and chorizo running through it. Mix it up. I mean, obviously, the, instead of using this, I could have just used sheets of pasta, but then you're not getting the special more sauce of lasagna. So this is really making up for it. So I call it lasagna, but obviously it's just like a ravioli bake. It just, yeah, I like it. I really like it. The meringue topped brulee. Oh, I just broke through the disc. Come on, let's get some of the, oh, look at that. I've got meringue, I've got the sugar and the custard strawberry. Oh, wow. Oh, that is really, really good. You know that charness? That's what hopefully I'm sort of showing you with this. Obviously there's workarounds by like getting ingredients with flavor already in it. But by charring it and things like that, it just gives it more flavor. It's baked ice cream. Oh, oh. <laughs> Last up. Got a little bit of a foamy head on it now. Actually, I feel like with a glass like this, I should have roller skates on. I don't. Oh my goodness. Oh, the, the hazelnut milk in there really does give it a delicate Nutella vibe. But then you're getting those like vanilla pods, those seeds from that more expensive ice cream in there. But oh, I mean, if you just use standard ice cream, put fresh vanilla pods in it. Huh, huh. Um, I don't know which one's my favorite. Well, I know the brie isn't, but the cranberry in the brie works well. So I don't know where you go from here. I was actually planning on doing a taste of the world playlist and doing different countries or regions within each country start a main dessert. But I feel like maybe if you guys like this, I've got a few other adaptions I can do for a few more weeks if you like. But check out the first one if you haven't seen it already. Uh, if you give any of these a go, any of my recipes, you guys are sending me pictures on social media. I absolutely love it. So please do that. And uh, I think I'm going to have a very nice lunch. Bye. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's mustache, goatee, maybe all three.
Hello, Barry viewers. It's me, Stuart. You know, the guy who eats tarantulas, destroys soda streams, and can't cook. As you may know, I'm making a second feature film, and I've somehow convinced Barry to appear in it. This weekend is the last chance to contribute to our crowdfunding campaign and help bake our hard work and ideas into a lovely cinematic cake. So if that sounds like a thing you might like, check out the page via this link. Thanks, folks.